new 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 Every time you sing that and then go to go to bed, all these crazy rabbits come out. I know. And me and Mosfet have to just like solve mysteries together. Okay, let's do this. Okay. A new badge. Well, okay, wait, I get to, Okay, so this is your badge. Well, this is our badge. Well, yes, but you 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 designed this. Yeah. So, uh, well, Bruce did. I What's going on here? Well, anyways, we did a, a video series called Citizen Engineer a long time ago, and that kind of kicked off what Ask an Engineer was because we wanted to do more of them. So we're going to be um, doing our Citizen Engineer series again. Probably hit some news, like cool, like technology meets like news mm -hmm. so uh anyways we got some badges people ask so these are embroidered and you can sew or iron them on yeah so that's fun yep okay, okay. next up Ooh, this is the smarty pi touch case this is for the raspberry pi seven inch display with capacitive touch it's a case for it that holds the pi in the display this one uh, we've already carried this for a while but now we have the version with the um lego on the front which can be handy um because you can um it comes with a little camera holder but you can also just connect anything that has like lego brick type connectivity on it so it can be kind of nice you can customize it or, or connect sensors um or like just bricks to hold things onto it so yeah handy Put your pie in it, put your seven inch display in it, and it's like a very tidy, compact, all in one computer. Okay. Next up. Ooh, we got our SDRs in. So, Great Scott um, gadgets. People love eight SDR stuff. Yeah, right. this is cool Freak stuff. Out. It's what's funny. I actually wanted to carry these about a year ago, and I just sort of like put on my list and didn't notice it until then. I was like, wait, it's been a year. Why didn't I carry these? So, Great Scott makes really cool open source hardware and software defined radios. So we're carrying uh, kind of the full range. So we've got this, the Hacker F1. This is the really sweet version. I think this is one mega, one megahertz up to six gigahertz, full range SDR output. So this is kind of, if you want to do SDR, this is a really good deal. It's only like $300, but it does everything. Like it can do transmit, receive on every frequency. It's very easy to program. Um, it's fully documented. It's kind of like the standard software defined radio that people use yeah. for all sorts of like reading listening and transmitting data yeah so you also have an, another couple of products you just put in these are things that work with it yeah we have antennas that go with them I mean, you don't have to use it with it you can use your own antenna but these are nice telescoping antennas we have uh one that i think is ooh, like 75 megahertz to a gigahertz and one that's i think that's a little more expensive and then a less expensive one that's i think about 350 to um, one gigahertz. So you, you have a couple, a couple ranges of antennas. I can show them on the overhead because they're, they're telescoping style. So um, you know you can extend them and they'll. Oh, that's cool. You know, pick your quarter wave, quarter wave wavelength or. I had a cell phone close. a long time ago that it had the like extender, like beep 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 beep. You had the. Yeah. Yeah. So this is I nice. I miss that because it's like I'm now like it's phone call time. It's yeah. Hello, I'm ready it's to SDR go. Ready, ready. So you can adjust it to get the range that you need. But it's a really nice telescoping antenna. It's got an SMA connector. Um, so this one is the smaller range yeah. one, and then this one is um, the bigger range one. So I'll back it up here because this is yeah. It's like massive. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, like this can go. We need, we're gonna get. We're gonna need a bigger boat. Okay. I know this is enormous. Yeah, yeah like extra two. Oh, careful, careful, I'll poke you in the eye. So I'm not opposed to a uh, pirate patch one day. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Okay. So we got the two antennas that go, you know, you can get either one with this. But, you know, for the for the nice Hacker F1, I was just getting, like, the bigger one because you get um, a lot more range with it. Okay. And, of course, you can connect your own custom okay. um, antennas. Oh, but wait, there's more. We also have the yardstick one. So this one is a simplified SDR. It doesn't do the full range of frequencies. It uses, I think, the CC1001 uh, chip, 1101 chip, which is um, a TI chip that you can be used to do like FSK and, and UK and like a whole bunch of different like key, keying uh, frequency, um, uh, for, you know, frequency keying protocols. So you can listen in and simulate um, a bunch of like different RF protocols, digital protocols. You do both, by the way. Yeah. I think the Hack RF one can do uh, can do analog, but the, this one is digital only for sure. And if this is the first time you heard about this stuff, go to the greatscottgadgets.com site. Oh, they, yeah. they have like a billion -y oh, amazing yeah. resources. Oh yeah, like half of DEF CON yeah. is just like, okay, so I took the like yardstick one, I did something with it, and, and then, then I published a paper. Here's so this another one. one. 
No, this is the same one. No, this is the reverse. Is this 8.5 and 8.6? Uh, I think one is the antenna, and yeah. this is the actual. It just has it with the antenna. So the yardstick one, you know, with an antenna, we should just get in the small one. It doesn't come with the antenna by default. It also doesn't have a nice enclosure. It's kind of just a USB stick. Uh, oh, sorry, it's a CC1111. Uh, I should just read it off here. Um, and you program it directly. And uh, so you can control it. Um, I guess it has a little microcontroller, so you can do USB, you know, has USB native, and you can um, control it over uh, the USB port and make it do whatever you like. So uh, probably like an 8051 core or something. So check out Great Scott. He's got a lot of documentation. He does like really cool open source hardware. Um, everything's available if you want to do your own software defined radios. Um, if you want to just listen, we have those like cheap RTL SDR chicks yeah. that sticks. And those work very well for listening. If you just want to, you know, I want to hear FM yeah, radio. Yeah, we want to have something kind of get you started and it's low cost. And then something that there's a lot of choices, but these are the ones that we think. These are, are yeah, these are kind of the, the best of the best. So if you want to do SDR, we're like, you know, they're, they're well-priced and very functional. And people have uh, a lot of, like, programming APIs built around it. Because they've been around for quite a while. Okay. So check that out and support Great Scott. All right. He does cool stuff. Next up. Some Skulltronics. Yeah, this is a cool badge kit, and um, I totally forgot the name of the maker, uh, which maybe you can look it up while I talk about this cool badge. Yeah. So this is a, um, a DIY soldering badge, but it's really beautiful. It's called Day of the Geek, so it's sort of Day of the Dead, but it's got this cool, like, you know, like Mexican art skull, and it's got, like, Ohm's Law in it, and it's got these resistor symbols and a chip, but it's kind of intricate and beautiful. Yeah, Dave the Geek. Um, and it comes like with gold uh, on black mask, and then you can solder in two LEDs. So maybe you can go to the overhead, I can show this. And it comes with a range of LEDs, so we just put in the red ones. And this is it, it just, it just lights up the LEDs, but it's a fun um, solder kit, and there's a pin. It's a good first project, and it looks really cool. I mean, how are you gonna say no to this? I can. You can pick w white, red, or blue eyes. Of course, you can mix and match. You can have like one red eye. If something one has white a skull eye. on it, I'm more likely just to buy it. Yeah. Just generally speaking. Yeah. So I carry these. I'm like, oh, this is just, just beautiful. Yeah. But they're they're just gorgeous um, masks. Like I I like the soldering kits, and I like the ones that put a little bit of effort into it to make a really beautiful design. Yeah. So that's why we're carrying this one. So it's really cool looking. Okay. Next up, the okay. star of the show tonight, besides you, Lady Ada, and our entire community. Is this? Yay! It's the Pi UART. So this is our new product for the week. Um, this is I've kind of done a couple little like mini Raspberry Pi add-ons. Like they're not bonnets or hats or fats. They're just really teeny little add-ons. Like we did a little OLED one, and then we did the um, that project with the the Pi hole ad blocker, and just wanted yeah. a little display to show a little bit of stuff. So likewise, this is a little add-on board um, that plugs into any Raspberry Pi. I show it with a Pi Zero, but you can actually use it with a Pi 3 or a Pi 2 or a Pi 1. And it adds uh, a USB serial chip. So you get the Scilabs uh, 2104, which is a USB serial converter chip. And there's a little bit of extra space left over because I had to make it a certain width to, to fit all the pins. So um, I had enough space to add an on-off switch. So there's an on-off switch with a transistor. That's nice of you. And uh, this means it's kind of an all-in-one powering and uh, interface. So I thought I would, I'd show it on the overhead. Demo time. So this is the board. Let me zoom in. So it just plugs into, it comes fully assembled. So I, I have a double-sided design. So it comes with this like socket header that is nice and slim. So it plugs into any Pi just in this corner. And then um, it has a green on LED. And then I have, you know, I have it connected through my, whoops, my laptop. Sorry, this hack RF1 is hacking my setup. And then when I um, let me log in, when I type, you can see the RX and TX LEDs down here mm. uh, light up. So let's run D message, and you'll see it'll it'll print a bunch of data transmits through. So this is kind of nice when you also want to debug, like is data coming in and out from the Pi? Yeah. So that's kind of handy. We talk about that when you're in the um, initial design phases. If there's things that we can do to show activity, like yeah. oh, like it's working, it's not data is transferring, it's plugged in, like. You can do something subtle. So yeah. that, was a, that was a nice touch. Yeah, and then when you're ready to go, so you're like, okay, well, I'm done with, hold on, I like started VM by accident or something. Um, so if you want to shut down, 
you can shut down your Pi, but then you want to still cut power to it. So after it's done shutting down and shut down now, you can then switch it off. You can see it's blinking, so it's, it's off. You can no, it's off, off. turn it off off by flicking that switch. Yeah. So it's just kind of nice. You can, you can power it um, from the switch directly, which I think is kind of handy. So it's, it's kind of an all-in-one. If you're doing headless setups especially, you can you know, now power it and have it on-off switch. You don't have to unplug and replug the USB yeah. cable all the time. Um, question from the chat before we uh, wrap up here. Can you put an OLED on here still? You can. What you would do is you would use a stacking header, and these would slide on, oh. and they, this, the header pops through. I, can, nice. I designed it so that you, you can, even though it has pre-soldered headers on it, they're, um, you can kind of see their trends. You the probably hole. thought about this. I thought about this. There's, the hole goes all the way through. There you go. So you can see the holes on the other side. So if you have long stacking headers, you can stack a bunch of these little mini boards yeah. on top of each other and they don't interfere. And the they're calling them pie slices. A slice yeah, of pie. Yeah, a little like yeah. mini, mini helper. So it's, it's just low cost and easy. What's nice about it is I just like to pop it on the pie. I, you know, set up the Raspberry Pi, set up Wi-Fi, and then I can, I can remove it. But it's okay. just an easy way to really quickly get set up. So I think I find this really handy for debugging. I like the console because Unlike Wi-Fi, it doesn't get disconnected once you're on the console. It's, it's there for life. Okay. And with that, that was New Products Lady. You did good work. Yay.